Hi, my name is Ariel Sandor. I'm the host of What It Takes Show, brought to you by Tech Moron TV, and coming at you from the Dumo Works office in Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Um, what It Takes, as some of you may know, is a series that we're doing in order to inspire and inform young, ambitious people uh, by giving them the career and entrepreneurship stories of other incredibly successful people uh, in Nairobi, in Kenya, and maybe even in East Africa. So today we have uh, Yvette Ondachi, who is the founder of OJ Green, um, and this is her entrepreneurship story as well as her career story. So stay tuned, all of you who are either going who are going on either path. So thank you so much, Yvette, for coming to talk with us today. Uh -huh. It's such a pleasure, Ariel. It's good to be here. Fabulous. So I thought we could start off with um, your your story, who you are. Let's get to know you and see what you've been doing for the past couple of years. <laughs> My story is a long story. I don't know how much time you have, but you know, um, I've gone through a journey. So I'm a scientist by my training, I'm a biochemist, and a marketer by profession, and an entrepreneur by passion. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. If you asked me when I started my career if I was going to be an entrepreneur, I would say no way. Really? Yes. But the journey through my career led me to entrepreneurship. So I started my career working with pharmaceutical companies and I was a sales representative. So I traveled across the country. I met people from diverse cultures and backgrounds. And one thing hit me, that guys were really poor. And that bothered me, that bothered me. I didn't have a solution immediately, but I started engaging and interacting with that. And as the years went by, so I progressed from sales to marketing and strategy. I progressed from taking care of one country to taking care of a regional. At some point, I was um, deputizing for Sub-Saharan Africa and dealing with very many markets. And the pattern was the same. The bulk of the population were poor. So we had these great medication that people couldn't afford. And... My last job at GlaxoSmithKline, I did a market research in Uganda. And even after lowering the price by 75%, people still couldn't afford it. Wow. And it just hit me that there is an underlying problem that needs to be tackled. And that is how I got into entrepreneurship. Wow. Yeah. Quite a journey. That, I mean, it's inspiring <laughs> just the kind of short synopsis of it. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, so let's just go back. So um, you said you rose from sales representative to overall marketer, more strategy deputy. What would you say? I mean, there's a lot of people watching that are trying to see how they can grow in their career and what types of skills and qualities they can attain in order to move up that ladder. Absolutely. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on you know some deep introspection, like what you think, why you think you had what it takes to kind of get that. <laughs> That progression? That progression, exactly. <laughs> I think the first thing is to love what you do. Many times we do what we do because we want to get a paycheck at the end of the day. But when you start to embrace what you do and do it with all your heart, it somehow comes back to be a blessing to you. And, you know, I was told that a sales job is a difficult job. People are going to shut doors on you and people are going to be bad to you. Yeah, but I loved it, and I was apologetic, you know, and I remember one of my clients telling me, this is really hard. I said, it doesn't matter, it makes a difference, and that was my journey, and that is my journey of influence. I fall in love with the things that I do, and that is what makes me up. And so, when you love what you do, you do it well, and you learn. A lot of people love to study, and studying is great. But I always say that the best experience is on the job learning. Learn as much as you can. Engage with people, look at things from different perspectives. Don't just get stuck up in your ways. Have an open mind. And as you were going, did you have like a mentor that you worked with who was kind of coaching you along the way? I've heard pharma sales are the hardest form of sales. And once you can do that, you can do anything. 
So was there anybody coaching you along this that you kind of learned from along the way? The people I learned from, I wouldn't call them like official coaches, unofficial mentors, but there were people who, um, I remember we had a regional manager from the UK and he was always willing to pay for training, to invest, to share his experience, and more so he believed in me. And that made a difference, yeah. But my greatest source of support, believe it or not, was not necessarily from my colleagues. It was from my circle of friends. I have an amazing circle of friends, of girlfriends. They scale the heights in what they do. And so we've been together for like many years. I won't say how many because I don't know who I am. <laughs> but we do books together. And one of the books we did, we did a series on women. We did a series on women of, pur women of purpose and women of influence. And, you know, we just focused on going to influence one another to be the best that we can be. And that has been my support system. So it's important to get good friends. Good friends. I'd love, maybe we could on our hashtag what it takes on Twitter, you can share some of the books that you guys have read to encourage and inspire you. Sure. Um, that'd be great. I'll be happy to do that. <laughs> and link in my friends as well. Yeah, fabulous. <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah. Invite them here. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Um, so you also mentioned exposure and travel and going to different countries and I know so many people love, would love to do that, people love traveling. I see it on so many CVs as a hobby, traveling, socializing, getting that exposure. But for people who might not have the opportunity or the means to go abroad and get um, exposure to other cultures, how would you recommend they can do it from, you know, from their couches at home or their, you know, amazing at work? You know, with the internet, the internet has become so amazing. You can reach such a broad spectrum of people. And just by simple networking, sometimes it's not about how broad you go, but it's about how deep you go. And it's about starting to make an impact where you are. You can make an impact in one life. Translate that to another life. And you can make an impact in one life at a time. Hmm. One step at a time. One step at a time. There is a time and a place for everything. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering, like, how do you how do you not get discouraged when you get turned down by clients? Because we all know that's kind of what happens all the time. So what's that your secret true. there? That is true. I think the first thing you need to um, consider is that it's nothing personal. <laughs> Many times people think, oh, they don't like me. No, it's got nothing to do with you. Maybe they just don't need your product. You know, and that is something I learned over the years. I learned to understand my customers. When someone feels understood, then you're able to make a connection. And the secret about sales is about making a connection with people and really understanding what they need. When you understand that you're able to position your product or your service in a relevant way, and it's about being relevant and getting the right customers, so maybe you're being rejected because you've not done your research as well as you should. So really, when you do a sales job, you really need to understand your customers and you need to spend time. Now, these are things that I think that you learn as you do. And a lot of times people don't like to make mistakes, but I celebrate mistakes. Really? I think mistakes are amazing. It's a great opportunity to grow. <laughs> do you have like an example of a big mistake you made that you grew from? I think that could be inspiring. <laughs> I'm going to give you a story. So yes. when I started my career, I was so enthusiastic, I think it comes to my personality, um, about this product and it just sounded like, this is God's gift to the world. I mean, it's an amazing product. Do you know what it was? It was a cough syrup. <laughs> but I was so enthusiastic and I went into this hospital and I was talking to these casualty doctors and I asked them, have you heard about this product? And I went on and on and this lady just looked at me and she listened and she was very gracious, she was very kind. One year later, so we built a rapport, we built a relationship and we're having a function together and our company is hosting it and she tells me, when I first met you, you asked me, have you heard about this product? And she said, I was so irritated. <laughs> I was like, really? She's like, of course I've heard about this product. How long do you think I've been around? Oh. <laughs> but you know what I celebrate? I celebrate the fact that 
she was open enough to share with me. And I picked that up as a learning. Later on in my career, I was training new sales reps. I told them, don't go into these pitfalls. <laughs> <laughs> this is new to you, but it's not always new to your client. This company has been around for this long, etc., etc. So, yeah. <laughs> Have you heard of this cough syrup? <laughs> Oh man, well it just goes to show you don't learn without making mistakes and you know, build a relationship at the same time. You build a relationship and you don't give up. You don't give up. You have good days and you have bad days. And guess what? Most of the days are bad days. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> so the motivation has to come from within. Pick yourself up and get a goal. My goal when I started working was I'm going to make millions of shillings for my employer. I wanted my personal contribution to be millions of shillings. And that's what used to drive me. Wow. Yes, it's good to have a goal. It's good to have a drive. And when you start making millions for people, you realize you can make millions for yourself. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that's the switch to entrepreneurship. <laughs> right there. <laughs> was that the, I mean, what was the, kind of... On that subject, like, what was the turning point for you to say, like, okay, my career's been really good? Because it's scary to jump off that ledge and, say, and go from your career to something that you don't know where your next source of income is going to be. You don't know if your customers are going to like the product. But what was the turning point for you to say, you know what? Yeah. I think sometimes we are shaped by our backgrounds. Hmm. And when I was in college, my mom, who had a very secure job, was retrenched. So at the back of my mind, I always thought that employment would let me down one day. And I wanted to have a plan B. Maybe it's just good to highlight that what I initially thought and where I am today has been a whole 360 degree turn. Or was it 180 degree turn? Totally the other way around. So I always used to say, I need to be safe. You know, my job may not be secure. And that was at the back of my mind for so many years. So, my shift to entrepreneurship started as a side hustle. Hey, Kenyans, you know about side hustles. <laughs> <laughs> we love side hustles. <laughs> <laughs> and I was introduced to this side hustle by one of my clients. No way. Absolutely. And what happened is, I was driving out of town, we were really, really far, and his car was down, so he asked me for a ride to the next town, which was 50 kilometers. Oh. We had lots of time to talk, and as we spoke, his kids were going to USIU. And I was thinking, those guys really pay you well. He said, no, this is for my side hustle. I was like, what's your side hustle? He says, I know. I said, no way. <laughs> <laughs> really? How? <laughs> Thinking. This part of Kenya, people are so poor who farm. How do you get to like, Tell me the real story. <laughs> so anyway, um, he inspired me and I started thinking. I said, really? Farming? USIU? <laughs> I said, it's worth a try. It's worth a try. Huh. And let me tell you, it has been a journey. Well, fabulous. We're going to cut to a break right now, and then when we come back, we're going to hear more about Yvette's entrepreneur side.